I'm Kim Geis, Assistant Director for Curatorial Services at the National World War II Museum. And I'm standing in our vault with some collections that I'd like to talk about today related to the American Red Cross. Volunteering with the Red Cross was certainly one way that women could get involved in the war effort. And I have some collections from women who volunteered with the Red Cross and who also worked with the Red Cross. The Red Cross had a tremendous number of volunteers. The effort was mammoth. Um, 7.5 million individuals had volunteered with the American Red Cross by the end of the war. And that's just a huge effort. In addition to those volunteers, they also had around 39,000 employees working with them. So uh, the services they were providing, volunteer aid of all kinds, um, you know, was just a, a tremendous effort. And the volunteer core was divided up into 11 different core. The largest of those was the production core, which had 3.5 million volunteers alone. And they, the production core, did things that I, I think were are most commonly associated with the Red Cross, like rolling bandages. And so providing bandages, mending and, um, and sewing clothes and, and things like that. So 3.5 million with that, that core alone. Um, some lesser known services are um, also represented in our collection. So the Braille service. We have one fantastic collection from Red Cross volunteer Mildred Payne. And Mildred was actually an employee of the Red Cross. She worked at the Red Cross headquarters in Washington, DC. But that wasn't enough for Mildred. Um, she also volunteered for the Red Cross in her spare time when she wasn't at work. And Mildred worked for the Braille service. And the Braille service, I think, is a little known, little represented um, part of the Red Cross volunteer effort. It actually only existed until 1942 because then it was done away with um, as um, technological advances uh, with Braille came into play. But prior to that, um, most of the work was done by hand, by individuals. And so um, Mildred worked as a volunteer Braille transcriber and she actually transcribed this volume here, the chiffon scarf, and it was transcribed in four volumes and then accepted into the Library of Congress in 1941. And here is the equipment, the Braille stamper that Mildred used. It's very unique within our collection. We also have some of the documents, the training manuals that she used, but here there's, um, the, here is the, the very equipment um, and even an example of some of the paper that Mildred used when she was working with the Red Cross Braille service. And related, on a related note, we have a uniform from Dorothy Sater and she was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and she worked with the Arts and Skills Corps of the Red Cross. So they came into play late in the war um, and, and Dorothy volunteered from 1944 to 1946 with the Arts and Skills Corps of the Red Cross. And here is her smock. The Red Cross, another interesting thing about Red Cross uniforms is because they had so many volunteers and they did so many different things around the world, um, they had a great variety in uniforms and equipment. And so it's very common to see um, uniforms of a shade that we've never seen before or of a type that's hard to identify because they there was such a variety. So the Arts and Skills Corps was um, came into play late in the war as I said and and they were in hospitals and rehab facilities who were working with the creative arts with um, with returning servicemen and women and so they were working to use the arts and um, artists to help provide new skills and um, rehab opportunities for returning veterans. 
So these are just two of the collections related to the gigantic efforts of the American Red Cross.